Welcome to another edition of Medical Device Packaging TV. This program is brought to you by Vanderstahl Scientific. Join us today as we explore together important issues surrounding sterile and critical packaging. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Medical Device Packaging TV. Hi, I'm Jan Gates with PackWise Consulting, and I'm here today to talk about seal testing, a very necessary part of an SBS system that you're going to be validating. Uh, a seal test is the closure seal, is what I'm talking about, that's made on a preformed sterile barrier for a medical device. And this is necessary to keep the sterile barrier system sterile. Otherwise, you have a breach and you can let all sorts of things in there that wouldn't be good for a customer. This closure seal must be continuous to maintain the barrier. And with a sterile barrier system, I am, I'm assuming that you actually understand what the 11607-1 and-2 says about a sterile barrier system, which is the minimum package that prevents ingress of microorganisms and allows aseptic presentation of the product at the point of use. Now, when you're working with sealing parameters, um, a seal actually occurs when hot materials cool down together. And there's three different sealing parameters that you have to worry about, time, temperature, and pressure. And you have to blend these three to get your optimum seal temperature, which I talked about a little bit earlier in another video. There's two methods that are generally used to make sure that a seal is good. So, these two methods are a visual seal inspection, which is usually ASTM F1886, and a seal strength, which is the ASTM F88. Now, as a backup, I tend to use a dye penetration test with ASTM F1929 that actually helps me understand if I have any channels or a non-continuous seal. Some people are actually using birth strength, too, um, and there's a restrained and unrestrained birth test that you can do with that. But those usually need to be based on seal strength. So you go back to your visual and your uh, ASTM F88 seal strength tests. Now, with the note on seal test methods, you have to make sure you validate your test method. So with F88, you have to pick which techniques you're going to use, consistently use the same technique, and use the same equipment for testing. Make sure your sample orientation is the same all the time. So if you have a Tyvek um, clear material, make sure the clear side is always on the right or always on the left. You just have to make sure that it's consistent. And cutting your samples is very important. You will not believe how inconsistent sample cutting can affect your seal strength. Or maybe that's something that you've noticed in the past when you're doing seal strengths, you get some non-normal data or something. It's generally more from the fact of the way that you actually cut your sample or have mounted it in your seal tester and pulled rather than the actual seal strength itself from the machine. Now with the visual inspection, this test method actually covers channels down to they have 0 .003 inches, or 75 micrometers. And that tends to have an a, a accuracy of 60 to 100%, but you have to validate that and make sure that you're actually matching what the ASTM says you can do. This test method is supposed to be applicable for a transparent side and a non-transparent side pouch. I've successfully used it with foil samples, but you have to make sure that you get your pictures and definitions down. Because especially when you're using a nylon material, it tends to shrink and expand when it gets warm and, and you've got foil or something underneath it that expands even more, you end up with something that looks like a channel that isn't really a channel. So you have to make sure that's uh, carefully defined. There are vision uh, inspection equipment that's available for use now. And I've seen this view visual inspection unit from Vanderstahl, and it seems to work quite well. I really enjoy the fact that you can add in electronic notations on whether you've passed or failed and what kind of failure you think you're seeing. And it makes a, a good 
permanent record of what's going on with your seals. Now with dye penetration, I like that particular type of test method as a follow-up type of test for uh, bubble tests, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It gets a very small hole, uh, you can see down to about 0 .002 inches with a 95% confidence according to the ASTM, but it's, it's pretty messy and it's hard to use it on a, a lot of samples at a time but it's still the best one I've seen. The best thing about it is it gives you a consistent solution that has a certain viscosity to mix through things. When you're using it with Tyvek, it can be confusing for some people because the blue in it wets the whole Tyvek area. So you have to know how to look at it and, and train people carefully on how to use it. Now with the bubble test, that's for gross leakers. It's the ASTM F2096. That's a way to make sure you still have whole package integrity. It tests more than just the seal. This is where you're going into your performance tests and you might have a hole somewhere else in your package and this bubble test will help you. And it says you can get some there between 0 0.005 inches or 0 0.01 inches with different accuracy rates. You need to validate or work with whoever's doing your testing for this to make sure that you're getting a whole size that makes sense for you to have. It's the best one that's out there right now uh, that I have used for quick and massive quantities of samples so that you can get your statistical sample size that you need for the 11607 tests. Burst tests are based on seal strengths and and they work quite well in production and are a quick and easy method to be using. Uh, there's a F2054, which is a restrained place. That means you've, you've filled up your bag with some kind of air and you've got plates around it to hold it so that it doesn't keep expanding and get the different pressure um, strains that go on around the seals. The F1140 for ASTM is an unrestrained plate. So. That one just lets them move. They both work, but you have to work on whatever works well for you. There are other types of inspection systems out there that are being uh, set up and used. They're not always uh, the best for production quantities, but they're getting better all the time. There's a new inspection system on ultrasonic imaging for your seals, which are very good for a particular type of seal on a package. There's vacuum decays, there's pressure decays, there's uh, carbon dioxide tracer gas checks, there's nitrogen tracer gas checks. You just, you have to see what works best for you. If you need more information on seal testing, be sure to work with ASTM or your sealer people or, or consult with a consultant. Thank you. This program is brought to you by Vanderstahl Scientific. Discover why organizations like the Department of Defense, NASA, and the Center for Disease Control make Vanderstahl Scientific a prime partner. Each episode, Medical Device Packaging TV brings more important insight from industry experts. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Medical Device Packaging TV. Vanderstahl Scientific. Innovations in critical packaging.